and a lot of moderation here. Yes. And so obviously you're thinking weight loss moderation is probably the same too. And sometimes I say you're actually better off losing maybe two pounds a week at the most. Right. Uh, is that what you're going for or do people lose more or less? I tell people one to three pounds a week is normal weight loss. The ones who lose more, they just tell me they eat too much. Because if you're going to drop weight that quickly without taking any amphetamines or any of some of those other diet mm -hmm. products, it means you've just eat, you eat too much. So that some people do lose more. Um, do I get angry at those commercials? Yes. And, I'll, I'll, let me, and the reason is because I, I was flipping through a magazine and there was one ad that mentioned no, you don't need to change your diet or exercise, lose up to 30 pounds in X amount of months with this super fruit. That's nonsense. That's ridiculous. It, there's no such thing in life. You don't gain that weight by doing nothing. You've overeaten. I don't believe that you can lose weight without working hard. Um, another thing with a lot of the prepackaged foods that we mm -hmm. were talking about, it gets to be very expensive. Most families cannot afford an extra $400 to buy those meals, feed their kid, feed their husband, so forth. That's why they can't do it. And if you look at those prepackaged foods, they're all junk food. It's all pasta, hamburgers, mm -hmm. brownies, sundaes. Eat a sundae, lose weight. Eat this, lose weight. What has it taught you about nutrition? It's taught you to eat junk food, to crave junk food. Right. So this is the problem that I have with those things because it's, there's no simple solution. So. so while food, there's really no foods that are verboten on this diet, but still nutrition is important and it is important what you eat. Correct. Because even though, you know, you're not going to eat just a palm size of pizza. No. So are, are there foods that you recommend more than others to people who are following your plan? I definitely say do your vegetables and fruits five to seven times a day, um, increasing your protein. If you're craving a pizza, you know, you can order it better. You can order thin crust. You can order less cheese. If you're a guy that eats four slices a night, eat two a night. There are little things you can do to your mm -hmm. life to make it different. I have some patients who eat on the road every night because that's how they live. You can order kids' meals. You can order, you know, a baked potato as opposed to the fries. You can make choices that might not show on the scale tomorrow, yeah. but in time you'll see better waistline. So. Now, protein is a very interesting thing mm -hmm. because it is the basis of a lot of the quick weight loss diets that you hear about, yeah. especially like an Atkins or the original one, which was Stillman, which was all protein, drink eight glasses of water a day. Uh, and Atkins kind of went off of that. Um, when we're talking about protein, proteins tends to have more fat mm -hmm. than, let's say, vegetables. So, but protein is still very important for the body. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's what actually helps burn, does it not? It, it, and it grow burn, muscle. Yeah, it, it helps with your muscle. It burns slower than carbohydrates. It sustains energy longer than a carbohydrate meal, which kind of burns quickly and mm -hmm. goes. So you definitely need a lot of protein for that purpose. Now, what about somebody on this diet if they're more vegetarian? I and mean, maybe they don't have the weight loss problem and the weight problem in the beginning uh, to begin with if they are vegetarian. But I have seen vegetarians who eat too many starches. Right. And it's like, well, that's not good either, even though you're not eating the meat. Right. It's once again just the amount. And that's funny you said that because I have a friend who's a who's a vegetarian, who's, who's a diabetic because they eat a lot of potatoes in their meal mm. now, you know, rice products. So once again, it's just, it's still the quantity of the food that we choose to eat, not so much each, you know, individual, but the amount. And that's what I try to stress. Okay. When we continue, yeah. we're going to continue with Dr. Ayn Anjab in just a moment, and we'll talk more about the Palm Diet. And if this is something that you're interested in starting, how to go about doing that, we'll continue in a moment.
Dr. Ainanja is from Beckley. She is the creator of the Palm Diet. It is January. We are all looking to lose weight, get in shape, and uh, this is a very sensible way of doing it. Would you say this is sensible? It's, Would you call your diet sensible? I say it's very sensible and very economical. It's realistic in the sense that I'm not trying to sell a mm -hmm. food product. What okay. was it that got you thinking, I want to create this diet and help people because there's so many things out there, and obviously you say you watch stuff on television, you get angry about it. West Virginia is always in the news for being obese. Mm -hmm. well, in Men's Health Magazine every year, I think Huntington, West Virginia is always in the top three of being obese and all unhealthiness. So it gets annoying when you live out of state and you hear all these negative things about West Virginia. That's number one. And the other thing is, is I get tired of um, people trying to do things the easy way without putting any effort into it. I, don't, I think there's enough people out there who realize you got to work hard if you want to have a certain lifestyle. And so I think combining all that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. when you went to medical school, I mean, you weren't really studying bariatric medicine per se, but this is something that just from your medical knowledge and, and all that, this is something that you just realized was important. It's very important for preventive health care. Um, as an internal medicine doctor, you know, a lot of times we see someone who comes in with 20 medications. They've been through the mill with just different illnesses. You, they, it's very hard to catch up with them. You get someone who's younger, who's healthy, try to get them to watch their weight. You can prevent them from having diabetes, cholesterol problems, blood pressure. Those are all amendable by weight loss. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen that happen with people, you know, real life patients who have shown that they can do it by losing 20, 30 pounds. And if families so. followed the portion size, the palm portion size with the carb and the protein and the vegetable, yeah. this would, uh, you know, a whole family can eat like this. Definitely. Especially kids now that you see, and I had a lot of kids who are getting obese and mm -hmm. that's a big problem in that generation. Okay, too. if you're joining us a little late, this is sugar and this is as much sugar as you're going to find in a 20 ounce soda or energy drink. Yep, that you buy the machines for a dollar, yeah. dollar twenty-five. <laughs> that's a lot of sugar and it's more than you're supposed to have for the whole day. Yes, you, three fourths is about. Mm -hmm. So this would be about normal. what you would want for the whole day. Correct. Yeah. So a lot of people will drink diet soda uh -huh. or diet energy drinks yes. or whatever, or diet iced tea, diet green tea. Yes which are sweetened with Splenda. some artificial type of sweetener. Yeah. Is that a better way to go? No, it's not. Not? It's not a better way to go. Um, the diet industry, and whether you believe what I say or not, because a lot of it is just, is not doing us a good job either. Yes, it's better than drinking that sugar that we're showing everyone. However, if it was such a good thing, why are people getting fatter? If diet drinks were so much better, Splenda, Carb Smart, all that, why are we still getting fat? Our bodies are very smart. They're, when you drink a diet drink, number one, it tells your body you're eating something sweet, but it's not the real thing. Most people start craving food at that point. The next thing it does is it tells your body, you know, everything's through a signal hormonal process. You touch that to your mouth, it sends signal, you're getting ready to eat something sweet, we're going to store it. Your body is still going to store that sugar substitute as a sugar product. So one thing is it makes you hungry, it still stores it as fat. And like I said, even if no one believed my mm -hmm. theory on that, which is my belief on that, look around. If it makes people thinner, why are we getting fatter? So that's gotcha. why I tell everybody. Now, so. it's all psychosomatic as well. Yes. Because if you have a craving, there's something in the brain chemistry which is telling you mm -hmm. and triggering a hunger. Sure. And so how do we re-educate our brains not to crave pie? in cookies and even macaroni and cheese which is on the plate yeah because that, you know i'm the type i mean they have a thing called carb addicts if i eat mac you know one bagel i want six mm -hmm. and that's a problem <laughs> that is a problem and you're not the only one that says no that. i know yeah and the problem it, it just takes practice to ignore those signals um what ha if most people who if they're catholic they do lent and they don't mm -hmm. eat chocolate for a month and the next time they eat it, it's too sweet, they eat less of it. So if you don't fill your diet up with those types of foods, you're not always going to crave it. The trick is, even if you ate that one bagel, is to learn how to kind of slap your hands and say, no, I'm done, move away, which takes practice. Yes. So that's the only way so you're going to retrain your brain. So power is involved here. That's, you can't that, do it with, I mean, because every other thing you see sold on TV, it's like, oh, this is going to be easy, and don't worry about willpower. And No, you have you know. to be accountable for what you eat. That's interesting to yeah, so, hear that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it's 
practicing is what takes is what I tell everyone almost even tempt yourself meaning I have some people who have to eat cookies every day that's just mm -hmm. their thing I tell them I would rather you eat three cookies every single day than not eat it and then binge one day on cookies you're better off eating a, every right. day and just learning how to stop it's almost like you're here about people grazing yeah. uh, that you kind of advocate that more so correct all right now yeah. when we're talking about desserts mm -hmm. are, is dessert okay I mean, you're talking about pie, and you're talking about this sugar, and just a 20-ounce, uh, uh, you know, soda. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's sugar added to pie. There's mm -hmm. fruit in the pie, mm -hmm. which has sugar. So, is it, this is this death? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't believe so. I I believe that if if you enjoy a small dessert with every meal, you should allow yourself that because the sooner you tell yourself no, you're going to eat two pieces the next day. Gotcha. So. I still think you should eat what you like. So. Okay, so kind of got this all explained here. And as far as drinking, though, mm -hmm. not booze, because that's not, you know, that does add weight. But when you're drinking, a, a, let's say if somebody's got a craving for a Coca Cola, should they go for the real one or should they go for the diet? I, or neither? One, one a day of either choice. I, okay. I, I kind of promote one a day for a soda, meaning it's a treat. Most mm -hmm. people grew up only drinking sodas at birthday parties and so forth. We didn't have yeah, it on the true. dinner table, and everyone grew up that way. Once a day, allowing yourself that treat once a day, whichever taste you like better. And but what about caffeine? Caffeine once or twice a day, too. That's okay, but that can yeah. also help metabolism, can it not? It does, and they're trying to, they're trying to promote that. Um, not so much through... I mean, nowadays they're saying coffee and stuff like that. The black mm -hmm. coffee can do that, but um, it's still limiting. I mean, excess caffeine has a lot of other effects too okay. on, the, on the blood pressure. So. But we hear a lot of you know, 64 ounces of water, the eight ounces of uh, water, eight glasses yes. a day. Is that a good number? Big proponent of that. At least six to eight glasses of just plain water. Some right. people add lemon if they don't like the taste, but. Okay, so let us go through, while we have a couple minutes here, the palm diet. We are talking about portion size of the palm. Mm -hmm. We're also talking about vitamin supplements, which you have in a pill form. Yes. But you also shoot. Correct. Okay, yeah. and that's the B12? We, B12 and B6 every two weeks through a, an injection through the arm. We do that for three months. Mm -hmm. And the pills are herbal pills that I make that you take four times a day. Four times a day? Four times With a meals? Day. Or With meals. Okay, now, it's obviously good to have a doctor supervising uh -huh. a diet because this is a big change in your body and your body chemistry, is it not? Um, what type of success have you seen with your patients so far? Um, I, I know I have some good success. I have probably over 200 people. Um, my biggest loser is 53 pounds in eight months and a handful of ladies who are 44 pounds in eight months, which is impressive because... I mean, they've kept off that weight in eight months. So. That's great. Keeping it off is the real thing. That, that's the hardest thing. Because the yo yo is what you want to avoid. This is a good way to do it. Yes. Very good. Doctor, thank you so much. And thank if you, you would like more information, the website is palmdiet.com and all the information. And of course, your office is in Beckley, not far from the hospital, Appalachian, right? Y yes. Very good. Thank, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> Happy New Year. And we will see you here next week. It's been a pleasure.